Hi, I'm Eric Paul, the Chemistry Guru, and you are watching H2 Chem Hacks, making H2 Chemistry simpler, one video at a time. Hi everyone, in this video we will talk about conjugate acids and conjugate bases. Now to start the discussion, we need to consider weak acids and weak bases, now, as represented by these two equations here. So this is an example of a weak acid, CH3COH, partially dissociate, uh, which is represented by a reverse, uh, reversible sign, to give us a CH3CO minus, H plus. Now we have our ammonia, which is an example of a weak base, meaning an H plus to form an H4 plus. Again, this reversible sign represents that it is a weak base, partial dissociation. Now, if we consider our weak acid, again, how do we know that this is a weak acid? Because in the four direction, this CH3COH will release a H plus, so therefore it's a proton donor. So what you notice in this case is my CH3COH will donate H plus to form CH3CO minus. Now we know that this is a H plus, obviously. How about CH3CO minus? How do we quantify this term? Now what you notice in this case is my CH3CO minus in the reverse direction, it accepts H plus to form back CH3COH. So CH3CO minus actually is functioning as a base. Like what we mentioned earlier, CH3CO minus accepts H plus to form CH3COH. So this guy actually functions as a base. So we call this the conjugate base of this particular weak acid. Now what this means is CH3COH and CH3CO minus they're related to each other. The difference between them is just a proton. And this weak acid releasing H plus to give me this conjugate base. And this conjugate base, accepting a H plus will give me this weak acid. So they are a couple, we call them a conjugate acid base pair. Now, think about this particular term conjugate acid base pair because it will be useful for buffer solution, which we will discuss in another video. Now, if you consider our ammonia, we know that ammonia is a weak base. So in the forward direction, my ammonia will accept a proton to give me NH4 plus. And what we notice in this case is how do I consider or how do we quantify NH4 plus? Now NH4 plus in the reverse direction actually releases H plus to form back NH3. So basically what NH4 plus is doing is it is functioning as an acid because it is a proton donor. So this NH4 plus is the conjugate acid of ammonia. Again, we notice that NH3 and NH4 plus, they are related to each other. The difference between them is a H plus. NH3 gains H plus to give me NH4 plus. NH4 plus donates H plus to give me NH3. So again, they are a couple. They are conjugate acid base pack. Now how about strong acids and strong bases? When they dissociate to form ions in solution, will they form conjugate acids or conjugate bases? Now if you consider the dissociation of this strong acid HCl, we know that this is an acid because it's a proton donor, it releases H plus in solution. We know that this is strong because this is a full arrow which represents full dissociation. Now it releases this Cl minus. What you notice is this Cl minus has no tendency to accept H plus to form back HCl. Because this is represented by a full arrow, there's no reverse direction. So Cl minus doesn't accept H plus. So Cl minus is actually not a base. So in terms of concept, it's easier to just quantify the counter ion form by my strong acid is neutral. Now similarly for strong bases, the idea is the same. So the hydroxide is a strong base dissociates fully in solution to give me Na plus and OH minus. Now if you consider Na plus, now Na plus is stable, it doesn't have any tendency to form back NaOH, so this guy is also neutral. Now after this discussion, I hope that you have a better understanding of conjugate acids and conjugate bases. In very, very simple terms, weak acids 
will dissociate in solution to give me a conjugate base. Weak bases will dissociate in solution to give me a conjugate acid. Strong acid, strong bases will dissociate in solution to give me neutral ions. Now, understanding of conjugate acids and bases is important because we need to apply this concept to salt hydrolysis to our equivalence point buffer solution. So we need to be very very clear about this particular concept. If you have enjoyed this video, please share this with your friends. To learn more about H2 chemistry, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. If you want to know more about my H2 chemistry classes at Nishan, please visit my website. Thank you for watching H2 Chem Hacks. I hope I've made H2 chemistry simple for you. I'll see you next time.